Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 5th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. One thing I mentioned last week is how 7-Zip introduced a new option to allow you to apply the mark of the web to any files extracted from an archive that was downloaded from a website. This feature has uh, three settings. You either may not set the flag at all for any file extracted. You may set it for all of the files extracted. And then there's a third option that's kind of interesting, and that applies the flag only to Office files. With Well, the history of Office files being abused, of course, makes some sense. So Didi took a closer look at how this feature actually works, actually uh, disassembled part of the code here of 7-Zip. And what he found was that, yes, as somewhat expected, this really is only applied if specific extensions are being used for the file name. You have your standard subjects, suspects here, like doc, docx, xls, PowerPoint, PPT, and such. One thing that they found missing was RTF. A lot of, in particular, like Folina exploits and such that uh, we have seen recently took advantage of RTF uh, to kind of fly a little bit underneath the radar and be not sort of fully identified as an office document. So just apply the mark of the web to all files. It's probably a safe option here. Remember, this only works if you're using the NTFS uh, file system. Then an alternative data stream is added to the file that does contain this flag and then prompts the user to acknowledge that the file was downloaded from a specific website. And Kaspersky has a good write-up of an interesting IIS backdoor that they have been seeing earlier uh, this year. Apparently, it is being used by more of an advanced threat actor. Uh, Kaspersky has seen about 20 organizations uh, being affected uh, by it. When you talk about a compromised uh, web server, in this case, apparently Exchange was often used to gain access. One of the standard payloads that you'll find is a web shell. A web shell is a simple script being added to the web server that typically is able then to execute a wide range of commands. Companies have gotten better at spotting those web shells. Usually you'll find a new file in your document root. So what uh, this uh, session manager backdoor does that Kaspersky found here is it does actually load a new module into IIS. So you will not see an altered document tree. Instead, the configuration of IIS is altered and this new module is being loaded. This module does understand your typical set of commands, things like retrieving a file, uh, saving a file, or uh, executing commands, and things like that. And these commands are encoded in the session cookie. So you'll see a request hit your web server, and then the session cookie is essentially the command that the attacker would like you to perform. I've seen similar things many, many years ago uh, with Apache, for example. Of course, with Apache, it's very easy uh, to load additional modules. This then again also does intercept uh, data also after any decryption happens. So TLS is not really any uh, problem for an attack like this. Best defense, I think, is forget about the specific indicators of compromise that Kaspersky lists. Yes, they're good. You may want to run them sort of as a due diligence thing, but you really need to monitor your server configuration and be able to detect uh, unknown modules being loaded. And Google released an update for Google Chrome. Now, the fact that I'm mentioning the update and the fact that it was released on July 4th should tell you that one of the vulnerabilities that is being patched here is already being exploited in the wild. The vulnerability is CVE 2022 
2294, a heap buffer overflow in WebRTC. There are two additional vulnerabilities being addressed with this update, but uh, they have not yet been exploited, at least as far as the advisory lets us know. So let Google Chrome do its thing and well, always a good thing once a day, at least uh, to restart your web browser, which often will trigger any updates that were downloaded for you. And trying to keep it a little bit uh, shorter uh, this week. Uh, that's it for uh, today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.